In this video, I'm talking about my guided weekly review page and how it helps to take back some control in your life. So there's this story about this woman. She's walking on the side of the road and in the distance, she sees a man on a horse coming at her and he's really booking it. He's like making massive speed and he must be heading to somewhere important. So she shouts to him, where are you heading to? What's so important? And the man just shouts back to her, I don't know ask the horse. So this is why a weekly review is important. If you don't steer the direction of your life once in a while, other people will start to steer it for you, meaning that their work becomes your priority and starts filling up all your time and eventually you'll end up somewhere where you didn't want to go. I made this template because I was getting stuck every week. I knew I had to do the weekly review, but I was confused. I was constantly going like, don't I miss anything? I had trouble finding my goals. So I made like a notion page that basically gets me there step through step. There will be a link to the template in the description. I've made three versions. The first one is the one that I'm gonna review in this video. And that's the one with my personal sets in it. Things that I find important. The other two are copies. One is empty, so you can easily add your own steps to it. And the last one is guided, where I added a lot of call outs with extra information to help you get started quickly. Now the first section is the prepare for review section. And that's mostly back from when I was still working in an office. And that meant that I would find a meeting room or a nice quiet spot. And I would put on headphones that would allow me to focus on this review without getting distracted by external sounds or coworkers. And second of all, I would basically disable my phone so I wouldn't get distracted with notifications or other things that would get me out of this mindset. Doing a weekly review basically means taking up everything that I've done in the last week and any, everything that I've planned into my head. And if somebody would walk in halfway through and ask me something, then I could basically start all over again. Then let's have a look at core values. And the core values are there for me to remind me where I want to ground myself, meaning that I take in my values and review them before I start planning ahead. Things that I look at are family and friends, which fills the social bit. So my son, my partners, then I have health under it, which is taking care of my body. And that means that Swift, so I'm currently exercising on a Swift bike. I try to watch what food I eat so they eat good food. And I try to meditate to like relax and not constantly be consuming new things. Then we get to the career path. Now this could be your work, but it can also be other things. In my case, I do freelance work, but I think that YouTube is definitely taking up a large chunk as well. And anything that isn't my freelance work or YouTube is, well, basically getting cut from my time. It's less important. And then of course we have like the sharp and the saw and that's my mental state. So that means that am I learning something new? Am I reading something? Am I doing something to improve? I know Kung Fu. And that will greatly help how you're mentally feeling. Then we get to the collection phase. And what the collection phase means is that there is all these little tidbits that I need to collect. Notes, scraps of paper, post-its, mail that I got in through the front door. All those things, I'm trying to collect them to get them together so I can work on it in one go. And then the next one is to move everything to my to-do list inbox. I have inboxes in Notion, I have inboxes in Logseek, I have inboxes in email, inboxes in mail. I've got different email applications because I got Outlook for work and Gmail for my private stuff. So all those things clutter up your brain over time. And usually you can easily resolve a lot of these things. Like if you hit reply and you can do a two minute answer, you should definitely do that. But once you can't, then over time it will start filling up and taking away your mental space. And at this point in time, I just chuck everything to my single task list, have everything on one spot, knowing exactly what I need to do and to make decisions on it. And finally, empty my head. So after I collected all these things, I've been very much into a work mindset and I need to prepare for processing that knowledge. That means that I'm taking like five minutes to just sit somewhere, clear my head, let it really open up a space to think and gather all this information and do something with it. Once I'm done and ready, I'm gonna go check my plans. And the first thing that I usually check is my waiting for list. And why am I waiting for list? Because it's easy to take action. My waiting for lists are things like in email, when I order a package and I get the like, this is your tracking number or here's your order, I label it waiting for. And then once a week I check, did I arrive that package? So 
those things are easy to clean up. Other things are things that I'm expecting from people and it's very easy to just hit reply and nudge them a bit like, hey, did you get to this? Something like that. So it doesn't take a lot of time, but it is important and it's easy to do to get going. The one afterwards is basically the same. It's loans, but waiting for usually has like a time span of a week. And with a loan, I usually think about a couple of months. A bit more complex comes after that and that's projects and projects are the things that I have open that I'm trying to run and one of the things that I find important here is to also check how many projects you currently have in progress so how many things are you trying to keep going it probably is too much clean it up a bit and focus only on like three or four big projects that you really want to get down because it will clear up space and it means you can focus on finishing these projects and then have time to finish other projects and you will feel much better about it and you're not keeping so much things in your head. And then we have the calendar block and that's to look back and forward. So I take my calendar, look back in the last week, see if there's anything that happened that I still need to take action on or that I want to create tasks for. I look in the next week to see if I got any duplicate appointments with multiple people because it's so much easier to mail them ahead of time a couple of days say like i can't make it can we reschedule then half an hour before because you notice that there's two people on the same time and then i skim like the next four weeks to know if there's any big things coming or anything that i need to make reservations for stuff like that now once i'm done planning it's time to get creative so i'm looking at the more long-term things that i got going i will quickly review my someday maybe list now i told you before that you could move projects here but the problem with a someday maybe list is if you never look at it then you can't really move anything towards it because your brain will go like yeah you put that there but you're not going to check that later so i need to keep it in my head and that means that these projects keep popping up in your head and you don't want that so once a week just skim over the list Preferably toss out anything that you know you're never going to do because you don't care about it, if possible, but a lot of these things stick around there because you're not ready to make that decision yet. Then any big plan. So if there's anything that you've got in your head that's big and you haven't yet written down, this is the moment that I write them down. Usually once I'm done planning, there my brain starts to free up a bit and I start getting bigger plans or larger things that were in my head and I didn't have time to really get down somewhere. Add it to a list, put it on somewhere, make a task, whatever works for you to give it the space it needs to put some stuff down to paper and then either decide to do it and add it to your active project or say like my project list is already big enough, but I'm gonna put this on my Sunday maybe list with the details I need. And I'm not gonna think about it until I got time to actually take action. And this is a personal one. When is the next group activity? And it saddens me to say that there haven't been a lot of group activities lately. And that's because, well, everybody was home due to the pandemic, but that should be ending somewhere in the next six months, I hope. And then, this is the thing where I check and go like, am I going out having food with friends? Did I do any bike trips? Did we game together? And this reminder is of course very important. If there isn't any in my planning, then I make a task to start planning that again. I don't do it here. This is mostly to check. Did I have this? Yes, excellent. Didn't I have it? Schedule one. Figure out whatever it is but make sure I'm out with friends. And then comes the most tricky part for me and that's thinking high level. Yeah, the basic questions here are like, what do you see done in six months? What do I see done in five years? It's that moment where I just take a bit of time to reflect, am I still on goal to be happy about what I did in five years? Maybe even 10 years, maybe even my whole life, but just having a moment where I, well, basically go like, Am I heading in the right direction? Helps me to recenter and focus and know I'm working on the right things. So finally, I get to the reward bit. Doing a weekly review is very taxing on the brain because anything that I put in front of me in the last week comes up, anything that I was planning in the future, anything I was planning in the past. So I reward my brain and myself by having a coffee, sitting down, usually in the sun now because the weather is getting better, maybe even have a nice little walk. That was the template. There's a link to the template in the description. It will go through Gumroad, which is something new that I'm trying. You do not have to pay for it. You can just fill in zero euros if you don't wanna pay for the template, but still wanna access it. I find it more important that you can access this information than me getting a buck out of it. 
but I'm also trying to figure out if I can start doing this full time at some point in the future. And that means that at some point I'll need to monetize this to pay for rent, this camera, all the other stuff around me. And I really want to grow to that point where I can make more content, more days a week for you guys. Thanks for watching. And remember, you're awesome. Keep it up.